Hey, so I was doing some research this morning on vitamin B12 and folate, and I came across this paper. And in this paper, it gives you a false impression of what many papers do. So this is a prime example of when you hear things on the media or when you read research at quick glance, it can pose, well, concerns and inappropriate uh, treatments and then reacting. So this is the paper that was published, okay? So it's basically saying that high folate levels uh, and low B12 levels are increasing the, uh, well, are associated with gestational diabetes. So high folate, low B12, increasing incidence of gestational diabetes. So when you go through this paper in depth, again, this is a full paper, you can access it uh, on the internet for free. So what does that mean? So does that mean that you have to find a prenatal or change your folate intake based upon you know, this finding? So you need to reduce your folate intake and increase your B12 intake? Well, not so fast. This study, you have to look at who they were studying and what was being done. As you know, I'm a huge folate fan, but everything has its pros and cons, right? So in this study, they were testing mainly vegetarians in a Eastern East Indian population. So vegetarians will typically have higher folate levels and they will typically have lower B12 levels. And a vegetarian diet is typically lower fat and lower protein, higher carb, unless you do it properly, which is difficult. I did it improperly for many, well, not many years. I did it for about a year and it made me not so good. I felt sick. So this was on a vegetarian diet, high folate, low B12, because you can only get, this is a, this is a false premise that you can get B12 from mushrooms or you know, your bacteria make B12. That's true, mushrooms do have B12, and it's true that your bacteria make B12, but it is the wrong form for your human biochemistry to utilize it. It's a different type of cobalamin. So when you break apart this study more, you find out that yes, low B12 and high folate do increase risks of gestational diabetes, which is increasing in incidence uh, in America and across the world pretty highly. So I did this diagram quickly here for you, okay? So here you got high folate and you have low B12. So you need both, you need B12 and you need folate to get through this gene right here, methionine synthase. If you do not have both, then your methylation cycle isn't gonna work. And so, and part of the reason why there's high folate levels is because there's low B12 levels, okay? You cannot have one without the other. So, well, you can, but it's going to cause issues. So the solution in this is to increase the B12 levels and the folate levels will come down. And so the, what the researchers found is they said, oh, it was interesting because we found high folate levels and low B12 levels were associated with gestational diabetes, but high folate levels with normal B12 levels were not. So that is huge, okay? So they themselves caught their finding, right? But they put the title in here to sense alarm and issues. High folate is not a cause of gestational diabetes. Low B12 is more the culprit. High folate levels will increase because there is low B12 levels. So you want to find a, a prenatal vitamin that has sufficient B12 and sufficient folate and find if you are able to absorb it or not. If you cannot absorb folate, like if you cannot absorb B12, then you should be looking at a sublingual, maybe look at, if you're taking antacids, it's gonna be a problem too. So antacids are, are commonly you know, self-prescribed. Uh, Dennis, uh, can vitamin B12 deficiency cause paranoia and delusions? Uh, 100%, yes. Um, so I'm gonna answer questions that are associated with the gestational diabetes and the folate. You guys always ask phenomenal questions, but I wanna make sure that they're related and associated with high folate levels, low B12 levels, or gestational diabetes. Uh, Lana, uh, can you please tell us if our baby girl is five years old, she has MTHFR, what is better for her folate or folinic acid? Um, it all depends. I would use a combination of both. Uh, folinic acid helps with white blood cells, red blood cells. 
and platelets and, and cell division and cell growth, methylfolate helps with methylation. And methylation is helping her develop her phosphatidylcholine. It's helping her with her creatine levels. It's helping her with her neurotransmission and genetic expression and her homocysteine levels. So methylfolate will also become folinic acid and folinic acid will also become methylfolate, but it's not always that easy. So I would use both. So again, if you are trying to figure out what papers mean by t- if they say that there's high folate levels found in the research that's causing leaking to autism or cancer or gestational diabetes in this case, and B12 is low, by rectifying the problem of, of, of increasing the B12, the folate will now get through. So it's, it's, uh, they, it takes two to tango with this. And the researchers also found that a higher homocysteine level was less associated with gestational diabetes. I'm thinking, well, that, that doesn't make any sense. And so you read the paper more closely, and they said that our population, since they're vegetarians and they don't eat much protein, their homocysteine levels are naturally lower because they're not consuming much methionine. Methionine is typically found in protein. And so they're probably eating more veg, you know, vegetables. And so there's not much protein in the vegetables. Thus, their homocysteine levels are too low. And so if they're too low, you also can't methylate. So when you order a lab test from, you know, with your doctor and it shows that your homocysteine is, is four or three or two, and it doesn't red flag it, it should because low homocysteine is a problem. So this paper found that in these vegetarian uh, research subjects that they had less likelihood of having gestational diabetes. So ladies, you have to make sure that you are getting sufficient protein while you are pregnant. And if you are not consuming enough protein, then yes, your homocysteine levels can be too low. If your homocysteine levels are too low, your methylation cycle is a problem and your glutathione levels are going to be dropping. And that is a problem. Tafen, is there a real risk of high B12 vitamin intake? Uh, I think there's always a risk of anything too high, for sure. So if you are pregnant and you're supplementing with B12 and folate, um, you know, too high levels are, are not going to be good. These, the good news with vitamin B12 and folates is they are water soluble and you'll just pee them right out. So it's not like you're taking a bunch of vitamin D or vitamin A in huge amounts and you can't pee them out, they, they build up. So that said, you know, I, I try to find a balance with people. So when you're taking a prenatal from Seeking Health or anyone else, you'll find that our Seeking Health uh, B12 is actually pretty potent. Uh, where is it? Yeah, so it's 150 micrograms. Now that sounds like a ton. Well, it sounds really small, right? But 150 micrograms, is 5,000% of the daily value. But keep in mind that the daily value is the least minimal amount required to prevent disease. And so that is not to me optimal, especially when you're pregnant and you have difficulty uh, with you know, absorbing things. So a higher B12 level on a label like this where it shows 5,000% seems daunting, but it's only 150 micrograms. And then you need the combination of folate. So when you're looking for prenatal, I want you looking for a combination of folate. And then you look in the parentheses here, it says quatrifolate, which is methylfolate, and then 50% as calcium folinate, which is folinic acid. These are two types of key to forms of folate. Um, so, and this is the optimal prenatal by Seeking Health. So next time you read research and they, they have these glorified titles of high folate or low this or high folate causes autism or high, low B12, high B12 is associated with autism. There are papers like this published all the time. You have to dig in and read the research methods, read who the subjects were and see what's going on with the whole entire methylation cycle. So this paper was actually just published, uh, well, not just published a year ago. So this is a paper here, five, high folate and low vitamin B12 increasing uh, gestational diabetes. So thanks all. I'm going to go outside. It's a beautiful Saturday. And uh, I just got stuck on the research, especially when it comes to pregnancy. I'm all over it. Take care all. Have a great day.